Absolutely. I do not wish to politically editorialize, but we have to look at the present current event realities to understand their scriptural significance. Barack Obama has a problem. His first problem is, as a political leader, he has been a colossal failure. Despite being re-elected as president due to the incompetence and corruption of the Republican Party establishment, the establishment Republicans, despite that, he has been a colossally failed leader. He has been the most politically failed leader in the history of the Democratic Party. They have lost a total of 1,032 seats since his election. Since his election, bearing in mind he first was elected with majorities in the Senate and Congress and could have done what he wanted, he lost control of the House and of the Senate, something he personally described as a shellacking. But they have lost over 800 seats in state senates and legislatures approximately 34 and ultimately maybe 36 governorships will now be Republican. He identified the election of Hillary Clinton as a continuation of his own term and if she was failed to be reelected as a rejection of his own policies. He publicly stated that, insisting that people who voted for him and vote for her because it would be a rejection of him and his policies if they didn't vote for her, well, obviously his policies have been rejected. The most they can do is point to polls of, of popularity, but we know above all else that these polls have been consistently wrong. The only poll that's been verified so far is the poll that shows that over 70% of the American public were unsatisfied with the way the nation was going under the leadership of Barack Obama. That was evident in the electoral results of the presidential election. All the other polls were wrong. He has nothing, nothing to stand on. He's concerned about a legacy now. He just assumed Hillary Clinton would win, but she has not. Obamacare is dying like a decayed fruit on the vine about to droop into the soil and decompose. Some states only have one provider left, only one. He lied repeatedly and was caught lying to the American public over 30 times. You can keep your present health care plan. He lied over 30 times making that claim. He lied over 30 times saying you can keep your physician. He lied, lied and lied and then lied some more. He said that costs would not exceed for working families $2,500 a year. In most states, they've gone up at least 40% to 60%, and in one state, Arizona, 117%. Barack Obama has lied and lied pathologically. It's not just his incompetence, it's his dishonesty. The whole thing is a fiasco. His legacy is dying economically of its own lack of merit, let alone the fact that it will now face dismemberment and eventual repeal under a new administration, according to the promises of, of Mr. Trump and the Republican Party, if they keep this promise. It's on its way out. He has no legacy in domestic policy, none. The nation is far more racially divided. More than that, the people who he has stabbed in the back most are the naive and foolish people who voted for him. Students, Jews, bearing in family, my own family are Jewish, and minorities, particularly Afro-Americans. Let's begin with students. On top of the student debt debacle, they have another problem now. It's not that graduates are paying higher premiums to subsidize older people. They were already covered by Medicare. No, they are paying higher premiums to subsidize uninsured people. The students realize they've been handed a crushing, crushing financial obligation that they're going to have to battle to pay in addition to paying their student loans. He didn't tell them this. He coerced. He deceived, 
he bamboozled and he manipulated, certainly manipulating the student vote into supporting him. But once he got into office, straight in the back. That is the financial and economic reality. The man has lied and lied pathologically. I live in Great Britain. I've seen socialized medicine. It does not work. Any benefit from it comes at a cost of other problems. Before Obama began trying to enforce Obamacare, using the nuclear option in Congress to do it, you had a 38% better chance to survive cancer in the United States than you did in Great Britain. 38% better! A much higher survivability rate of heart attack and cardiovascular failure in the United States than Great Britain, despite the fact that the physicians and medical colleges are just as good and they have some very, very dedicated people in the national health, but the system is a bureaucratic, out of control, unbelievably costly quagmire that no British government or party can get a handle on. Unless you have private insurance, in addition to the high taxes for the national medical insurance, you're in trouble in Britain if you get seriously ill. I was recently in Pittsburgh a few weeks ago, and I met an African lady from Nigeria on an elevator with a little baby girl. This baby girl came from Nigeria to Pittsburgh to have an eye transplant. Overwhelmingly, the mass of surgical and medical innovation Pioneer therapies come from the United States. The development of new drugs comes from the United States. Now we can make the argument Americans pay too much for prescriptions and we're unfairly subsidizing medications that other nations profit from. Nonetheless, we always highlight what's wrong with the American system, not what's right. Now, the costs are ridiculous. The costs in America are ridiculous. Something had to be done. But all Barack Obama did was take a bad system and make it worse. A 117% increase in premiums in Arizona after he lied and said no working family would pay more than 2,500? A system where we're gonna work with your employers to lower your premiums by up to $2,500 per family per year. We will start by reducing premiums by as much as $2,500 per family. Here's what change is saying to people who already have health insurance and the employers who are providing it, we'll work to lower your premiums by up to $2,500 per family per year. I also have a health care plan that would save the average family $2,500 on their premiums. And if you already have health care, then we're going to reduce costs uh, an average of $2,500 per family on premiums. We're going to work with your employer to lower the cost of your premiums by up to $2,500 a year. And we'll cut the cost of a typical family's health care by up to $2,500 per year. And if you've got health care, we're going to work with your employer to lower your premiums by $2,500 per family per year. And we will lower premiums for the typical family by $2,500 a year. And cut the cost of health care by up to $2,500 per family. Uh, and if you already have health care, then we're going to work with your employer to lower your premiums by up to $2,500 per family per year. You can keep your physician. You can keep your existing health plan. He lied, lied, and lied again. If that man couldn't lie, he'd have nothing to say. We will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan, period. First of all, if you've got health insurance, you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. Nobody is talking about taking that away from you. No matter what you've heard, if you like your doctor or health care plan, you can keep it. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your private health insurance plan, you can keep your plan, period. 
If you are among the hundreds of millions of Americans who already have health insurance through your job, or Medicare, or Medicaid, or the VA, nothing in this plan will require you or your employer to change the coverage of the doctor you have. Let me, let me repeat this. Nothing in our plan requires you to change what you have. Our approach would preserve the right of Americans who have insurance to keep their doctor in their plan. And when European-style waiting lists would have eventually kicked in, if Obamacare was not going to be repealed, you can bet a disproportionately large amount of the first bodies in those morgues on those slabs would have been black. Obamacare is economically in ruinations. It's all based on a lie. When the Republicans had control of the Congress, they did not use the nuclear option. Harry Reid screamed it would be undemocratic to use the nuclear option where you need a simple majority to force legislation through instead of a two-thirds majority or 60% majority. But as soon as Harry Reid wanted to push Obamacare through with Nancy Pelosi, they used the nuclear option they denounced as being anti-democratic, the open hypocrisy of this. The Senate was set up to be different. That was the genius, the vision of our founding fathers, that this bicameral legislature, which was unique, had two different duties. One was, as Franklin said, to pour the coffee into the saucer and let it cool off. That's why you have the ability to filibuster and to terminate filibuster. They wanted to get rid of all that, and that's what the nuclear option was all about. And is there any likelihood that we're going to face circumstances like that again? As long as I am the leader, the answer is no. I don't. Th I think it. I think we should just forget that. That is a black chapter in the history of the Senate. I hope we never ever get to that again because I really do believe it will ruin our country. A piece of legislation that would effectively nationalize about 18 percent of the economy, somewhere between 1,100 and 1,300 pages placed on the desks of members of Congress virtually the night before they were to vote on it, Nancy Pelosi said, we have to pass this to find out what's in it. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it away from the fog of the controversy. This woman is out of her mind. But so are the people in San Francisco who vote for someone like that. This is pure idiocy. Nations get the leaders they deserve. Now, I'm not trying to politically editorialize, but Barack Obama has no domestic legacy. His centerpiece, his prize, is a blithering, ill-conceived failure. Some people believe he knew it was going to fail, it was designed to fail, in order to get the nation a dependent upon an unworkable system so the only alternative would be to force socialized medicine on the rest of the country as a means of centralized political control, as we see in Eurosocialism. I don't know if that's true. Certainly he's an incompetent. Certainly he's a liar. Certainly it's not worked. He's no legacy. We look at what's happened. The students, he got them to vote for them. And as soon as they did, he gave it to them. Then there was the Jewish community, and it was speaking here in my own family. A Jew voting for Obama makes about as much sense as pinning a gold star on your chest and paying your own airfare to Auschwitz. He has been anti-Israel from the beginning, pandering to Islam from the beginning. Alan Dershowitz, professor emeritus of law, Harvard Law School, admitted Obama was a deceiver who misled him. But it's too late, Alan Dershowitz. Now, at least you have had the integrity to admit he deceived you and misled you. He will go down in history, President Obama, as one of the worst foreign policy presidents ever. He called me into the Oval Office before the election. And he